Hi, my name is Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis, and we are going to be talking about continuing our conversation about composition of substances and solutions. And specifically, we're going to be talking about molarity. Molarity is in section 3.1 of the OpenStax 2E textbook. Please check out this link. Um, this is going to be what you're going to want to uh, use to read before you watch this video. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay. So molarity, um, before we really dive into molarity, because this is the definition of molarity right here, uh, moles of solute over liters of solution. The trick about this is we have to know some other definitions first for this to really make sense. Uh, specifically, we need to know what the solute is, what the solvent is, what a solution is. So the classic example I like to give folks is Kool-Aid. So when you put that powdery goodness or horribleness, depending on how you look at it, into a pitcher, that powder is going to be your solute because what follows the powdery substance is water. Um, so the water acts as the thing that dissolves the uh, powdery substance. The water then is your solvent. So solute, the thing you have the least of, solvent, the thing you have more of, um, and does the actual dissolving or disassociating or puts the other thing in solution. Now solution in this case is the combined solute solvent thing. Um, so when you're done making your Kool-Aid, you've put in your powdery substance, you've put in your sugar and you've poured in water, all of that mixed together, that's going to be your solution. And so with that then um, we can say what is our concentration of said solution? Or we can ask what's our concentration of said solution. So we then use an equation like this above. Um, you could also have said before you saw molarity, you could say, well, how many grams of powder substance did we add per one pitcher of water? And that gives you an idea of concentration. Um, but in chemistry, we don't relate things to one another using grams. We use moles because moles is a count of how many and we need to know how many of one thing react with how many of the other thing. So we're going to use molarity because mole, molarity is moles of our solute divided by the total volume of our solution, but that volume specifically has to be in liters. I see a lot of people who want to fight that. Please don't fight that. It's liters of solution. You need to make sure it's in that unit. So the best way to get good at these is to practice a bunch of examples. So the first example we've got is what's the molarity of a solution if it has 0.32 moles of sodium chloride dissolved in 1.3 liters of water. So let's go to the examples. All right. So 0.3. 0.32 moles of sodium chloride per 1.23 liters of water. Strictly speaking, we've got moles up here. We've got liters right here. So we're going to have units of moles per liter when we do the math. So we can find our calculator, and here is calculator, fantastic, um, and you can really use, for any molarity problem, you can really use any calculator, just make sure you remember um, how to hit the divide key, because that ends up being the most important one most of the time. So 0.32 divided by, or 0 0.32, sorry, 0 0.32 divided by 1.23, and we get out a number that's something along the lines of 0 0.20, uh, I'm sorry, 26, 260163. Uh, cool, we do our sig fig thing and we say, based off of this and the division rules, the moles of sodium chloride had the least number of significant figures, it had two, so our final answer here should have two. So we have 0 0.26, molar solution. You could also not use the complex unit of molarity and you could say it's 0 
moles over a liter and everybody's going to still say, oh, moles over a liter, that's molarity. Okay. So that's example problem number one. Now let's do example problem number two. Okay, a solution is prepared. Let's go to the big screen. A solution is prepared by mixing 15 grams of sodium sulfate. 15 grams of sodium sulfate. Oh no, we have to know our naming rules in order to do this problem. With 125 milliliters of water. The density of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter for this given solution's temperature. Okay, what is the molarity of the solution? Let's talk about this problem here for a second. Um, and let's go here to the board, as it were. So, um, we know we've got 15 grams, 15 grams of sodium sulfate. So, sodium sulfate, I'm gonna give you a second to write out what its chemical formula is. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Hopefully you're there and hopefully you remembered it is sodium sulfate. Um, so we've got 15 grams of this and it is prepared by mixing that with 125 milliliters of water. Where does the density come into play? Okay, well for some problems that we'll eventually end up doing in the course, the density will change things. Um, there's this thing that's going to come up later called molality. Don't worry about it right now. It's totally fine. The reason I bring it up this moment, though, is because uh, if you are dealing with a solution at a different temperature, um, the volume will change at different temperatures. The mass won't, but the volume will. Um, and that's back from the stuff we talked about in Chapter 1. At that point in time, if you're given the mass, you will have to use the density in order to figure out the volume. So strictly speaking, anytime we report a volume ever, we should always report at what temperature said volume was measured. So if you're in the lab, you really should be saying like, oh, that's 25.00 milliliters at, you look at your thermometer, 23.1 degrees Celsius. Because density changes as temperature changes. Because volume will change as temperature changes. For this problem, it's not really gonna matter though. Um, that's what we call extraneous information that you are hopefully learning to pick out of problems like this. Yeah, it's true, the density is that. So it's not like it's wrong. It's just we don't really need it since molarity here is moles of solute over liters of solution. And it gave us what our solution is. So our moles, well, we'd have to figure that out by saying our 15 grams of sodium sulfate. And we would have to use our molar mass of our sodium sulfate. So if you go to the periodic table, you type stuff in, um, and then you're going to figure this out. Oh, crazy recording. We type stuff in, and we find out what its molecular formula is and we find we're going to be at 142.04 grams of sodium sulfate and my head is blocking some of this per one mole we'll move it here in a second okay what no as my youngest would say now you can't see it at all very good uh, where are we at? There we go. Great. Still. So now we have our conversion of sodium sulfate to moles of sodium sulfate. And let's be civilized and let's continue that. And naturally we're going to need to scroll over for this to actually work well. Scroll over, I ask you. Nope, that's just numbers. Very exciting doing things live. There we go. Yeah, let's see. So we've got the 15 grams there. Um, if we do this conversion, we're now in moles of sodium sulfate. Boom and boom. We can go ahead and get the molarity by just dividing this number of moles by the volume that we've got. 
the volume we have is 125 milliliters. It is perfectly a-okay to divide something just by dimensional analysis here, this one over the 125. There's nothing in the world wrong with that. Um, we are still doing division. We're still going to end up with our units of moles per liter. Trick is we don't end up with moles per liter because that's in milliliters. So we have to use our 1,000 milliliters over 1 liter conversion. And now when we do everything, we can cancel out our units and milliliters cancel. And we will be left with units of moles of sodium sulfate over liters of solution. Now you might be asking rightfully, okay, that solution was 125 milliliters and we're dissolving 15 grams into it. Won't that change the volume of our solution? Short answer, yes. Longer answer, it will be negligible. What do I mean? Yeah, we're going to change the volume of the solution by introducing a solute to it. Um, there's going to be more stuff in our solvent uh, in the form of the solute being in there. But if we really take a look at how much solvent there is to how much solute we've added, the amount of change in that volume we're assuming here is negligible. If you're doing something ultra precise, you would want to take that into consideration. We're not doing something ultra precise here in general chemistry 150. Um, so it is a valid assumption to say, yes, the volume will change. However, since it is so negligible, we can safely ignore it. And that's totally a-okay. So we type this into our calculator. So we get our 15 times one times one, because we're completionists, times 1,000, divided by uh, 142.04, divided by 125, divided by one, because we're completionists. We enter all of that as one string into our calculator, and at the end, we end up with a number that's something around uh, zero point, let's put that in a better color, why don't we? Zero point two eight one six blah, 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 moles per liter. Go back to your original problem, figure out what your lowest number of significant figures is. It's going to be your 15 from your sodium sulfate. So we need to have two sig figs here. So we can write this out as 0 0.28 molar solution. Not horrible. Not horrible. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Now, let's talk about some dilution examples. The whole idea behind dilution here is that if we think about that Kool-Aid, so let's go back here over to the screen for a second. If we go back to that Kool-Aid and we make ourselves, oh, let's make some cherry Kool-Aid. That sounds kind of nice. And it's in this really, really terrible beaker. And we only put about this much water in here. So it's H2O and our stuff. Kool-Aid's with it. I think it's like that. Nope. I think we're missing an L. Kool-Aid. If you take a drink of this, it's probably going to be way too sweet. So what we could do is add water. And then we end up with a better looking beaker somehow magically. And now we have the original water. We have the Kool-Aid. Plus we have more water that got added. It was this stuff right here, right? So the amount of Kool-Aid does not change from one contain, like from the before and after picture, right? That's the key thing behind a dilution. The amount of Kool-Aid itself doesn't change. The amount of solvent changes. Solvent changes, but solute does not. And that's how we get the dilution equation. So you get that whole, let's scroll this up here just a little bit. 
that's where you get the whole uh, let's we'll scroll this down just a little bit there we go molarity times volume equals moles for the before picture and the molarity times volume equals moles in the after picture and that's because molarity is moles over liter and volume if that's in liters well the thing cancel and so you have liters canceling out liters and you're left with moles same thing over here mole over liter times liter molarity times the volume equals moles boom boom but specifically because nothing changed in terms of the amount of solute these two moles right here are going to be the exact same number they're going to be the exact same number in a dilution as long as your amount of solute does not change if you do a chemical reaction and it changes the amount of solute this relationship no longer holds up the before and the after picture change right but if the amount of solute stays the same throughout then you're ready to rock and roll so this understanding is where we normally get the m1v1 equals m2v2 now your book goes through and i believe that they use something like if i can get this thing to scroll i think they use something that's like c1v1 equals c2v2 and that's where concentrate they're just using concentration generic they're not saying it's molarity um it works the same i was just brought up on m1v1 equals m2v2 so that's what you're going to hear me say a bunch but that's why it works it's because the before picture the before picture has the same amount of moles as the after picture they have the exact same amount of moles so this relationship works so if we take this then and use the question that we've got above my head um, and we say that our molarity of a solution um, is so the before information and the after information this is how i do it folks this is really how i think before and after the m1 v1 equals m2 v2 the before uh says we had 25 milliliters and it was 2.1 molar and it's saying we are now diluted to a new volume and what's the molarity? That becomes x. So this becomes an algebra problem now. The difficulty with this question, with these kinds of questions, comes in the frame of um, making sure that you put the variable in the right place, because they will start to word these a little bit more complicated in a more complicated fashion. Um, making sure you put the right variable where. Uh, at first glance here at this equation above you might be thinking oh well the molarity the x is in the before picture it's not it's not um, you have to reread it a few times perhaps in order to make sure that that's clear there um, but the what is the molarity of a solution uh, with a new volume is in that language there is telling you that it's the after so we do math and some of you should probably be screaming right now hey but the molar the molarity is 2.1 moles over one liter times 25 milliliters the milliliters and the liters won't cancel well you're right you are right you know it will cancel though the milliliters over here and the milliliters over here because the math is going to say that we're going to take both sides and divide it by 341 milliliters and so then i wish i hadn't used my cancel color but whatever milliliters there is going to cancel milliliters there fun fact so we type in two side calculator, we do our algebra. So 2.1 turns 
turn on calculator 2.1 times 25 divided by 341 and we end up with a new molarity let's get a color here our new molarity is going to be 0 0.1539 five nine mole over liter because those are the only units that didn't cancel from above and since they didn't cancel we can't cancel them out this should make sense because x represented a molarity and indeed we have moles over liter which is molarity the thing that we have not done is our sig figs and we can look at the problem and we can see the lowest number of significant figures was two because it's multiplication and division rules it's going to be 0 0.15 molar. This was a dilution. Because it was a dilution, the after concentration should be lower than the before concentration. If we'd have ended up with a number that was like 150, that should have like sent off warning bells that we did the problem wrong. Uh, because you can't have a higher concentrated solution after you dilute it. It doesn't work that way. So it's important to self-check afterward, even if you're like, well, I don't know if that number's right. You should be able to look at the number and get an idea. Okay, it's in the realm of possibility. All right, we got one more example here, I think. Okay, oh, this is a nice one, it says me. Okay, um, let's go to the full screen. What volume of the concentration of nitric acid Wolf concentration of nitric acid is 15.8 molar. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a second to write out what you think the molecular formula for nitric acid is. Got it? Okay, we're going to show you the real answer here in a second. Uh, what volume of concentrated nitric acid is necessary to create 300 milliliters of a zero point? Uh, zero, or 0.10 molar nitric acid solution. So this kind of question is really pretty common, especially in the lab. Um, you don't buy reagents most of the time that come to the exact concentration that you need. Um, so let's say you need a 10th molar nitric acid solution. You could buy a 10th molar nitric acid solution most of the time, though, you're going to buy concentrate, and then you're go you would be responsible for the dilution. And it just so happens that concentrated nitric acid has a concentration of 15.8 molar, so it'll really do some damage. So that's why we typically don't have you guys do the dilutions yourself in Chemistry 150. That in time, that in time. We're on a time crunch. Speaking of time, let's get to this problem because it's time to figure out what the answer was. Okay, so there's your nitric acid, HNO3, fantastic. Let's set it up, the before and the after. Okay, M1V1 equals M2V2. Now, the concentration before dilution is 15.8 molar. What's our volume before the dilution? That's what the problem's asking us. The problem's saying, okay, we don't know what volume of that concentrated stuff we need in order to make this solution. So now that's gonna be our X. But we also have a good indication that that is X because we know that we have a desired after concentration of 0 0.10 molar, and we have a desired volume of 300 milliliters. And this is where, like I said, those word problems can be a little bit tricky. Um, you have to make sure that you are putting the right information in the right places. So if we scroll the right direction now, where you can actually see stuff, this is an algebra problem. That isn't to say it's easy. That is to say that the chemistry component of it um, is making sure that you get the stuff in the right place. The only way to make sure that you actually know how to do that is to practice a bunch of these problems. So there's some on your homework, there's also some in those uh, end of chapter questions as well. So let's go ahead and let's solve this out. The 0.1 times the 300 divided by the 15.8 
And we're going to end up with something that's like x equaling 1.89873. I didn't write out all those math steps for you, though, this time. What should your units be for the problem the way that we have it set up right now? Well, if you wrote it out, there's two ways to play. One, you could have converted the milliliters to liters, and that's totally fine. Then all your definitions work out, and you ended up with a number that's different from this one. And that's fine as long as your units are proper. For this one, because my two molarities are going to end up canceling out, the only unit that I'm going to be left with is my volume, right? I can make it. Yeah, I can touch it. That's fantastic. Is going to be in my milliliters. So this would be milliliters. So in order to make 300 milliliters of a tenth molar solution, I only need one point, a lot of digits, of my nitric acid. You should immediately be saying, what about sig figs? And I would be saying, good job you for remembering that. The number of significant figures you should have is two because of that tenth molar. It's one, 0 0.10. So that's two sig figs. So we're going to end up with 1.9 milliliters of our concentrated. Now, if you had reported that in terms of liters, that's totally fine. Totally fine. It's going to be a really small number compared to this. But this is already a small number, right? Um, and that's okay. That's pretty much how dilutions work, though. Okay, so that's been a number of examples of molarity and dilutions. Um, please let me know if you have any questions regarding uh, molarity and dilutions, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.